Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Nicole Gitsky. This is the Stagecoach Fire. The fire exploded to more than 2,500 acres. That's nearly four square miles. Firefighters are trying to get an upper hand on the dangerous and ever-evolving situation. But as of now, Mother Nature is winning this battle. There is no containment. Evacuation recommendations remain in effect for several areas. We have learned two homes have burned in this fire. Now, the fire is burning in our mountain region, cradled between Lake Isabella and Tehachapi. It's a rural area, but many people reside in the dense forest and this afternoon they're wondering if their homes are still standing. Now the Red Cross has set up an evacuation center in Tehachapi. The temporary shelter is located at the former Kmart parking lot located at 710 West Tehachapi Boulevard. Recommended evacuations are in place for the area west of Caliente Bonfish Road in the community of Meadows and the area north of Walker Basin Road and east of Caliente Bonfish Road. Precautionary evacuations are in place for the area off of Indian Indian Oaks Road east of Caliente Bodfish Roads. Again, the temporary evacuation point is in the Tehachapi in the former Kmart parking lot. Now, it's been a busy night for our county firefighters. In addition to the stagecoach fires, the department has responded to two major house fires, one in California City and the other in Taft. The Red Cross says they have set up evacuation centers in both cities. Now, these are not related to the stagecoach fire. And it's not just the stagecoach fire that we're watching. Several fires are burning across our state. One of the major fires we continue to monitor is the Apple Fire burning in Southern California. The fire started Friday in Riverside County. Fire officials initially said the cause of the blaze was due to arson. Investigators revealed the fire was due to a diesel vehicle that had burning carbon coming from the exhaust system. So far, the Apple Fire has burned more than 26,000 acres and is 15 percent contained. At least one home has been destroyed and nearly 8,000 people remain evacuated as of yesterday. Fire officials are looking for potential witnesses who may have seen that fire start or seen a vehicle which appeared to have mechanical problems. Now to the latest on the coronavirus here in Kern County. Public Health confirms another 577 new cases along with seven deaths. That brings our total to 21,238 new cases. Our death toll stands at 151 people. 248 are recovering in the hospital. Roughly three-fourths of Kern's cases are considered active at this time. Almost 15,000 residents are recovering at home. Well, Kern County has reached yet another grim milestone. Um, The model that we have been using had predicted the end of July was when we would cross over and potentially uh, have concerns about capacity in our ICU beds. Uh, In fact, that has occurred. Uh, Most of our 10 acute care hospitals are inundated with ICU patients. Um, Adventist Bakersfield, Kern Medical, Mercy Downtown, and Mercy Southwest are all at or exceeding their licensed ICU bed capacity. According to Constantine, Memorial has three beds available, three more at Bakersfield Heart Hospital. Delano has one, Kern Valley with another three, seven in Ridgecrest, and three available in Tehachapi. Now that's all that remains in the Golden Empire at this time. Constantine says this is a big issue they are currently following. At the last board meeting, supervisors approved allocating 80 ICU nurses to local hospitals to help to increase capacity. And now a bigger push for those who have survived COVID-19 to donate convalescent plasma. There are over 5,000 people who have recovered locally, but Houchin Community Blood Bank says just over 100 COVID-19 survivors have actually donated their blood plasma, which is currently the most effective therapeutic treatment we have at our disposal. Starting this week, 15 members of the employee health benefits team have been trained and will begin making calls to those who have recovered. Houching Community Blood Bank is offering an incentive as well, gift cards to anyone who is willing to donate their blood plasma to help others survive. The promotion was supposed to end on Sunday, but Houchin says it has extended it for another week. Convalescent plasma donors will receive a $50 gift card to a local restaurant, 
Two donors have a chance to win $500 gift cards every day. The program has been extended to August 8th. If you're interested in donating, call 616-2575. Well, today we are continuing to see another warm day out there. Let's send things back over to Kevin. Yeah, that's so important, Nicole. You know, we have drives. We raised thousands of dollars and look at how many people could give plasma and save a life. Hopefully they'll reach out to Houchin. We're at 93 degrees in Bakersfield, a northwest wind at six miles per hour right now and our high so far 93. Uh, normally we should be right around 98. We will be close to that. I think we'll be closer to that triple digit mark uh, 109 the record and that was set back in 1901. Here's a look at other temperatures. We're running into the 90s in all areas of the valley, 86 in Fraser Park, 81 in Tatchby, 91 out of Lake Isabella and Ridgecrest already at 99 degrees. Not a lot to show you on the satellite and radar, a little bit of cloud cover along the coastal area for today, um, and we're still tracking that trough that's going to impact us all really heading into tomorrow. 94 in Sacramento today, Fresno at 100. We're looking at 70s down in the south, 107 in Vegas, and 110 out of Phoenix this afternoon. So here's a look at our big headlines. Day number nine of the heat Heat wave number five was yesterday. It's our 29th triple digit day. The fire danger is extreme, and we're seeing the uh, indications of that with the stagecoach fire. And uh, relief arrives, yes, tomorrow in the temperature department. You're going to see that on the extended forecast. Air quality for today going to be moderate with an AQI at 67. Today we'll call for temperatures near 100. Bakersfield, 199 in Shafter and Wasco, 97 out in Taft for the mountains in the Kern River Valley. Today, looking at 87 in Fraser Park. Park. Stallion Springs at 81, Tehachapi at 87, and then 90s for the Kern River Valley, Lake Isabella at 95. And then out in the desert, we're seeing a cool down in Ridgecrest, but still quite warm at 105. That's uh, contrary to the 109 they've been seeing and 98 Mojave and still keeping that breeze around as well. Here's a look at the extended forecast. Tomorrow, 93, 91 on Thursday, and then, yes, it's short-lived as we get closer to the triple digits by the weekend into early next week. For the mountains, cooler weather tomorrow, 82, 80 on Thursday, and then by the weekend, mid to upper 80s return. And then for the Kern River Valley forecast, lower 90s tomorrow, upper 80s on Thursday, but then we're right back up near 100 as we approach Sunday and Monday. That's look at your forecast. We'll be right back. The U.S. Census Bureau is cutting short its data collection for the 2020 census. The Bureau has decided to cut the collection short by a month. Now, some are worried this move could drastically impact the numbers, including the change would miss some communities producing less trustworthy data. Now, also that could be affected the $1.5 trillion in spending that's set to be distributed. The Bureau said Monday that they will end their count in September to meet the deadline instead of October as previously decided. And in your 17 Crime Watch, a CHP officer, a prison employee, and two registered sex offenders were all caught in a sting targeting child predators. Since May, KCSO's Special Victims Unit has arrested 15 suspects who allegedly thought they were meeting children for sex when it was really undercover detectives posing as minors online. Sheriff Donna Youngblood says predators are using the pandemic to their advantage by looking for victims on social media where children and teens are spending more time. Joe Gregory, president of Grapevine MSP and Technology Services, says it's important for parents to monitor what their kids do online and make them aware of threats. For kids, it's important to have that conversation because of the amount of predators that are online looking to take advantage of the, the children being naive. Um, it's an unfortunate circumstance, but it is very important that parents not only have the talk with their, their children about the dangers of uh, you know being online, not to give out personal information, not to give out their address or any sensitive information that could you know link back or help a predator find them. Gregory also stressed the importance of communicating with your child about their activity on social media. He says that parents should all have the login information for their social media accounts and that parents should review the profiles with their children. Well, CHP is investigating after a person was reportedly hit by a car around 9 p.m. last night. CHP says the accident happened on Nile Street just east of Mount Vernon. One person is said to have minor, major injuries but it's not clear what those are. CHP doesn't think that drugs or alcohol were involved. The driver of the car stayed on scene and cooperated. Now this is still an ongoing investigation. 
And the Bakersfield Police Traffic Division is conducting a DUI checkpoint later today. It's happening at an undisclosed intersection in the city starting at 5 p.m. Bars and nightclubs across California remain closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but that doesn't mean people have stopped drinking and driving. Police want to remind everyone that a DUI isn't just related to alcohol, but also drugs. If you're driving impaired in any way, you are subject to a DUI. Schools are facing a dilemma over reopening. Yesterday, Dr. Fauci made comments about the process of reopening. He said that while kids aren't as likely to get sick, there's still some concern for their health. But he also cited the benefits for parents and students alike of returning back to school. My approach is always, and, and, I, and I'll say it whether I'm in Connecticut or in any other place, is that the default position should be to try as best as you possibly can to open up the schools for in-person learning for the following reason. It's important for the children because of the psychological benefit and in some places even for the nutrition of children who rely on the breakfast and the lunches in school for proper nutrition. Number two, there are important negative downstream effects that are unintended but can occur of a ripple effect on the parents who have to dramatically modify their own work schedule when you keep children at home. Now, even though Kern County children aren't going back to the classroom to start this year, they still need supplies for the upcoming semester. Monday kicked off the back to school supply drive. Now, typically you can drop off donations at our studio, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, things will look different this year. You can donate virtually or drop off donations at the Bakersfield Homeless Center. Now, the drive will last until August 20th. Supplies needed include backpacks, notebooks, pencils, markers, boys and girls cl clothing, and more. Now, for more information and how to donate virtually, visit our website, kget.com. And Kern County Animal Services wants to help pet owners who are struggling during the pandemic. They will offer free dog and cat food through the Pet Food Safety Net program. The program was made possible by a grant from Maddie's Fund and a donation from Hills Pet Nutrition. To get the food, just text the word pet food to the phone number 555-888, then fill out the application sent to you. You will then be able to pick up a supply of food. More information can be found on our website, kget.com. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Noon. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to kget.com.